as a PC gamer, we don't always get the best reputation as being sort of accessible to the general public. In fact, when you're listening to the console versus PC debate, one of the things that gets brought up more than anything else by far is that console gamers want that living room experience. PC gaming is often cited as being overly complex compared to consoles and is often given a bad rap for not having the ability to uh, game in the living room in comfort and just kick back on the couch, which by the way is completely false. So today I want to go over just some of the essentials that you'll need to have if you want to get your PC up and running as either a media center computer in your living room or more importantly, a gaming center that you can just sit back on your couch, kick back, and play on your TV. Coming up. We begin you really need a couple things before you even start thinking about gaming in the living room first and foremost you're gonna need a computer and a television now if you're wanting to sort of do the the living room couch experience with the right way or at least the right way in my mind you're gonna mostly want to be doing um, all of your accessories and peripherals wirelessly so the first thing you're gonna need obviously is a television remote control and pretty much every TV ever conceived in the last, you know, several decades has uh, come with one of these remotes, and, you know, this one's mine. It's from Vizio, and it works just fine. The other thing you're going to need to have definitely is a wireless keyboard of some sort so that you don't have to be tethered to your PC with a cable. Personally, I use this Logitech, Logitech wireless keyboard, and the link will, for that will be in the description below. But there are several other alternatives online and in retail stores that can give you the wireless experience for a more compact size. And some of these mini keyboards, both Bluetooth and with their own standalone dongle, do a good job of that. Those peripherals will sort of get you up and running, and in some cases, the wireless keyboard, especially the full-size keyboard with its own trackpad, can actually do a decent job of doing some light gaming that is mostly keyboard-based. But if you're going to do some serious gaming with AAA titles, you're going to need to pick up a controller. To this end, I have a few controllers that I own sort of laid out here on the table. First, we'll start with the two console controllers. I have an Xbox One controller, and this is the original, not the Xbox One S, which does have Bluetooth. And for this controller to be used with a PC, you either just need a USB cable, which has a micro USB end on it, which you, if you have an Android phone, there's a decent chance it still uses that connector, and any generic cable will work just fine. Or you'll need to pick up a wireless adapter, which Microsoft sells, which will allow you to connect your controller wirelessly to your computer. Alternatively, if you are a Sony fan, or just a fan of their controller in general compared to Xbox's alternative, then you can pick up a DualShock 4 controller that goes normally with a PlayStation 4. Now, Steam has recently added support for this controller with most of its games, and it will essentially act just like an Xbox 360 or Xbox One controller would act in those titles. If you're going to go that route, however, you will need a USB adapter or you will need onboard Bluetooth. Uh, the adapters, if your computer does not already have its own Bluetooth adapter, are really, really cheap. And I got a four-pack for less than $20 of these small, tiny USB adapters, which I will link in the description below. If you're a fan of emulators, however, you may want to go a slightly different route than the mainstream current generation console controllers. For example, if you're going to go with retro gaming and using mostly emulators, you may even want to just pick up one of these uh, USB SNES controllers that's available on uh, Amazon for as little as about $12. And this particular one does a great job of uh, making those games playable again on your computer. And by using a controller that the games were originally intended for, it really just sucks you back into the immersion of playing retro games as if you had the console right in front of you versus playing it on an emulator. The last controller that I sort of want to highlight here is sort of an oddball controller, and that would be the Steam Controller. The Steam Controller replaces the left D-pad with a touchpad and completely replaces the right joystick also with a touchpad. This sort of opens up a whole new realm for gaming, especially from the living room and a couch experience. Because the Steam Controller uses touchpads, it gives you full mouse support where the other controllers don't actually give you the ability to control the cursor. This will allow you to at least partially replace the wireless keyboard you are using to control your living room PC with a controller that is intended for gaming in the first place. 
It also opens up other genres. For example, Civilization V might not be really playable unless you have a wireless mouse and keyboard solution or something like the Steam Controller. Now, PC gaming in the living room isn't a perfect experience. For example, you're gonna spend a lot more money on the added peripherals than you would if you were just buying a console. A wireless keyboard may cost you about $20, an Xbox One controller with the dongle included still costs over $50, and again, a DualShock 4 controller is gonna sort of be in that ballpark as well. However, because you're running a PC, you have more options available on the controller side of things. You can go with a wireless keyboard mouse combo. You can go with third party controllers that may be retro styles or may be current style. And you can of course go with original Xbox One or PlayStation 4 controllers, depending on your tastes and preferences. In addition, and most importantly for somebody like me that really enjoys real-time strategy games, is this setup will allow you to play these games in a living room setting, especially with the Steam Controller. Playing Civ 5 on a TV is actually super enjoyable and an extremely cool and kind of unique experience to be able to do. The best part of it all is when friends come over, they'll ask you what game you're playing because maybe they had consoles and aren't really used to seeing those real-time strategy games, and that may actually start to get them a little bit interested in PC gaming as well. For this video, I just wanted to point out some of the accessories that you will need to add to your system if you're planning on putting it in the living room, and with these devices, or at least a few of them, obviously you don't need to get them all, you should be up and running and gaming on your couch in the living room in no time. And as always, guys, if you like this content, give me a like down below. Also, share, subscribe. All those things are super helpful. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Hoosier Hardware. I'm going to go ahead and let YouTube queue up another video for you to watch from my channel. I'm Shane from Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.